Well, hey, YouTube. Welcome back, everybody. Um, we're going to break off from this beam engine tonight, uh, waiting on some hardware to come in. So, uh, just in the meantime, we've got something that came in the mail today. I thought we might as well take a look at it. We'll uh, hurry up and get it ripped open. I haven't, let me see, I haven't opened it yet, so I'll get this cut open. We'll take a look and see what's inside. There's the paperwork for it. We have, looks like four replacement floor gel O-rings. Another drill start attachment. A pull rope. Get this guy dug out of here. This is a little bit bigger than I was expecting it to be. But let's anyway, get this out of the road and throw him up here. This is a R90 engine, they call it. And it's patterned after a, a BMW motorcycle engine. And they made R90 motorcycles uh, 73 to 76, something like that. And uh, these have a, a long history with BMW, the opposed twin cylinder like this. They started back in the 20s. So, um, yeah, kind of neat little thing to play with. Opposed twin. We got our fuel tank there. Here's our throttle. Dual exhaust, one for each side. I don't see a, an oil sump for it. But all right, well we'll set him down. We'll get a quick look at our oh so informative instruction sheet here. So it's 3.2 cc's with a 13 millimeter bore and a 12 millimeter stroke. Um, this one here also operates on three AA batteries and it says use gasoline to fill the fuel tank. It says number 95 number, so I'm guessing 95 octane or so. It says nothing about filling the crankcase. So. If you look down here, it says the engine can use gasoline and aviation kerosene. The engine needs to add about 3% lubricating oil to the fuel. So, 40 to 1, that ought to get it, but. Before we fire this up, let's kind of let's take some of these covers off and look inside of it before we start it. Just to kind of see what it is. And it's new and clean. So, all right. Well, it looks like right here we do have look at that. It doesn't say anything in there about it. And well, that works out great because our fuel pipe stops our oil cap from coming off. That was an engineering oversight. So, all right, well, let me uh, pull some of these covers off. We'll take a look at it on the inside and see what it looks like. So hang on, we'll be right back. Okay, so we're gonna take our last screw out here on this front cover, see what's underneath of it. And that looks like that's our uh, ignition pickup. And then this would be our cam gear. And our crankshaft is right there in line with that. So this is our gear train for our crank to cam with our pickup for our ignition. So I'll get this in off the top. We can look underneath the head. And that's what our carburetor looks like. Looks like it just splits off and feeds each one of our inlets. Kind of neat looking. I'll pull the valve cover off of. Let's take it off of this side here. I'll get you where you can see. I 
no gaskets on any of these, but. Here's our look down inside of our. This one's no different. It's, <laughs> every one of these has been really sloppy, but. All right, well, let's figure out how we can get some oil down in this crankcase. It doesn't say anything about it, but there's a port here to put it in, so I don't know why we would tempt fate by not doing it. So let me take a look at this and see what we can come up with. It almost clears it. gonna have to get our intake manifold loose down here on this side yeah get that loose and we'll show you guys what happens next okay well we got our pipe loosened down here at the head and uh, it doesn't say how much oil to put in there but I don't even see a check plug on it anywhere to check to see what the oil level is but well, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put some oil in it. That was 15 milliliters. I'll put a little bit more in. If it gets to that crank and slings it around, that'd be uh, I'd be okay with that. So that's 20 milliliters and if we can get it to where it's you know coming close to our cam or our crank and slinging it around in there I feel a whole lot better about it but all right well, I'll get this oil cap back on get our intake manifold tightened up we'll leave these covers off and uh, we'll fill up our tank with our well, the same VP 40 to 1 94 octane fuel and uh, get our batteries put in it and then we'll see what it does. So let me get this cap, this cap back on. Okay, well that's back together. Our intake pipe is tight. Our carburetor's tightened back down. Um, I'll tell you what, what a fiddly pain in the butt that is. It's probably why they tell you not to worry about putting oil in it. But okay, well we've got oil in our crankcase. Let's get batteries for our ignition system. We'll get them put in. Then we'll flip it over and put our. Uh, fuel in our tank so yeah just three double a batteries nothing fancy you know, and this one does have little rubber feet on it that kind of brings me to something else i was going to mention is uh a lot of these little models when they run especially those uh little hit and miss engines they will just jump all over unless you have them anchored down and i found these things and they work seem to work really well um, I don't know what brand they are but you, know, you can tell they're good because it says as seen on TV but uh, grippies and they're these little silicone pads and you can peel the protective cover off on both sides and you put it underneath of something and it just it doesn't slide they work really good and they're sticky and flexible and if you knock them on the floor They'll pick up any dust and dirt that's down there. Well, you take them inside and wash them with soap and water. And, well, they uh, back to being sticky and doing what they're supposed to. So that's just something that uh, I thought I'd share with you. Thought you might find it useful. All right, let's get our fuel put in here. Get our fuel cap off here. Our glass syringe down in here and make a big mess. Alright. This back on, we'll get a rag and wipe this guy down.
turn our ignition on, we'll listen for spark. I heard it. I guess with that said, we uh, we should be ready to put this in the drill and spin it over and see what it does. Hopefully it fires off. Looks like we've already pulled fuel up to our carb just by dumping it in. So that's wide open and that's idle. But just above an idle. We'll get our drill starting attached by putting our little drill here. We'll roll it over and see what it does. Here we go guys, first start. Switch is on. valve it's not sealing up and it's not because we have a it's not because it's set too tight it's just not sealing up so all right well i'll get the covers put back on that i thought you guys might find this interesting i do have uh the third video on this beam engine over here i've got to do the rest of the editing and stuff on it but uh i just thought well keep you guys excited and interested i'd show you this little guy i was happy to see it sitting here so all right, I'll get this buttoned up, and uh, the next one, we'll be back on that beam engine. So, once again, guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you guys have any questions or comments, please just drop them down below. I read every one of them, and I try to reply to all of them. So, once again, thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye.